Hello guys, welcome to Redditor's Revenge. Here we post amazing revenge stories daily. And if you want more content like this please do subscribe to the channel and stay tuned with us. Moving to today's story, about OP whose wife cheated on him, and now his mother supporting his cheater wife and forcing him to forgive her and not to divorce her. Now story. So last night my wife of 7 years decided to have a chill out night. After dinner, she went to the den and was watching her programs, while I flitted between watching the Spurs game soccer and doing some odds and ends that I had planned. Next thing I know she's got the wine out and has had two bottles of the stuff. At around midnight I went to check on her and saw she was out cold on the couch. I went to scoop her up when her watch thing buzzed and a message popped up on the screen. It said something along the lines of haha, I can't do that my name would knock seven shades of shit out of me. I wondered what the duck that was all about so I pressed on it and it was a conversation between my wife and a friend of mine. Now I wouldn't say this guy is a close friend of mine but he's someone I've played five sides with for years, drank with, and have known since we were teenagers. We used to call him Jacket Holder because when we got into scraps as teens he'd always be the guy holding the jackets while everyone else went for it. Right so as I said I pushed on the conversation while this thing is still attached to her wrist and scrolled up to the top and as far as I can tell it's him that contacts her first unless she's deleted. There's lots of flirting and wink-winking going on but nothing that you could outright say was cheating. Then I get to last night, and when she's drunk she starts openly begging him for sex I couldn't believe my fucking eyes. I'm paraphrasing here because I can't remember the exact words but she was saying shit like how much she had always wanted him, how no one would ever find out if he did want to do something in the last one that ducking killed me, that she was great at keeping secrets. I tried to scroll on her watch but couldn't find any other messages and I don't know her phone passcode. I put her in her bed and just sat in the kitchen in shock until I fell asleep, then got up for work at about 5.30 am. When I went to get in my work van I just plunked down on the wheel and realized I couldn't face it so I went back in the house grabbed a half drunk bottle of vodka, filled to the top with coke, and went on a walk down the railway line we live beside a lot of woodlands and a disused railway line that goes for miles and I've walked about half the length of it. I'm sitting under a railway bridge like a ducking troll right now just seething at the whole thing. You'd probably think there's a fire going from about a mile away due to the steam coming out of my ears. So what do I do? I don't want to speak to her. I can't even bear to look at her after reading that shit it was like a dagger through my heart. I just feel like every morsel of love I had for her has evaporated into thin air after reading her begging like that. Ducking yuck. I honestly want to ghost her man. If I could I would never speak to her again. The whole I'm great at keeping secrets was the thing that got me through like who even are you? Does it reek but it's a case of how far down the rabbit hole I want to go. I don't care if I'm being honest I'm just done. I've never felt so betrayed and disgusted in all my life. The thing is I've invested so much in her not just as a partner, but as a person. I loved her so much and thought her personality and by extension, my personality reflected that of good people. To realize she's a backstabbing snake makes me feel like a snake. I feel like a worse person than I was yesterday. The only way I can describe it is for someone you looked up to, took advice and life lessons from to suddenly find out they were a pedo, or an abuser or just a downright creep. Your entire perception of yourself and who you are would be shattered because you've taken on board what they've said and invested time into a creep. God, I'm rambling nonsense I apologize. I'm lucky in that our house is owned by my parents, who six years ago moved to a retirement village and we moved in. The house will be bequeathed to me when they die but I don't and hopefully won't own it for a long time. They couldn't be bothered with the upkeep and all the problems etc and wanted to see out their final days in peace so when we do divorce my soon to be ex won't be getting her hands on it. So what do I do then? I'm honestly thinking of just not saying a word and throwing her right out. Also while walking here it went through my mind to get my mate who's a locksmith to quietly change the locks today. I could feed her any old garbage about something from the doors being broken. She won't care what's going on anyways, as long as I'm about. Then after he's done lock the front door and tell her to come out and look at something out the back. When she comes out just run back in and lock the door behind me. That sounds childish as duck doesn't it? But seriously though I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm staring at a bottle right now and my life feels like it has been ripped apart at the seams. As for that prick so called friend of mine, there's no doubt he was up to something here. There's also no doubt I wouldn't have caught wind of this at all so I'll be seeing him very soon. Never mind holding jackets he'll be holding his face. Wednesday the 28th of October. 
So yesterday after I had written the post and was in a complete mess, two dog walkers came over to check on me as I was concerning them. I told them everything. They listened and the first thing one of them said to me was, Son, the worst thing you can do right now drink. It'll cause carnage. I have to thank her for that because I was on the highway to hell at that point. I threw the vodka away. Got in touch with a friend and he said I could come to his for a while to calm down he was at work but told me where the spare key was. We live in a small town of around 15,000 people and he wasn't too far away so once I got there I sat on his couch just trying to calm down. Throughout the morning I was getting multiple texts and phone calls from my wife asking where I was and what the hell was up as my work van was still sitting in the driveway and I was nowhere to be seen. I text her back telling her that there was a problem with the engine so I got a lift into work which she seemed to buy as she just texts back saying okay. When my friend got back from his work at about 5 o'clock I told him everything that had happened and asked him his opinion. I also told him not to tell anyone about the jacket holder as that might then get back to my wife which I didn't want at this point. I would deal with him later. By that I mean I'll expose what a little rat he is. Knocking duck out of him doesn't help me at all as of now. As an aside to the people saying he done nothing wrong, he messaged my wife first, he was being extremely flirty. What the duck is he even playing at messaging my wife for in the first place he only knows her in passing, from afar. Look I've got no problem with two adults conversing with each other but they hardly knew each other and it was flirty from the start as far as I could tell. I think they've seen each other while out and about and it's gotten flirty then. So my friend convinced me to try and keep a low profile and see what I could dig up but at the same time speak to a lawyer and get the ball rolling in terms of finding out my options which I have done today. He took me home at about 6 o'clock and I was honestly dead on my feet by that point. I think the adrenaline pumping the entire day then suddenly stopping knocks it right out of you so I was extremely tired when I got home. The second I walked through the door I knew something was up as my wife was on me right away asking me all sorts of questions about work. I asked her why does she even care. She said that I'd left my big flask and my lunch bag in the front passenger side seat and something's been up today, she could feel it. I was about to lie but I was just too tired. I couldn't be bothered putting any sort of charade up so I just said yeah there is something up. That when I was putting her drunk arse to bed last night a message came up on her watch, which I read, and all the other ones. And that she was a ducking disgusting cheat that I wanted nothing more to do with. Her demeanor went from arms crossed person in power to a scared little girl within about a second. Good at keeping secrets eh? Begging that little rat for S-E-X-A. Yep, read it all. She started sobbing and I just walked away and upstairs into the shower. When I got out she was sitting on the top stair crying still and the excuses started right away. How she was drunk, vulnerable, had never done anything like that before, how he had messaged her first and it didn't mean anything. She was never gonna go through with it. Pretty much everything that everyone on here was saying she would say like she had the playbook out. The only thing she didn't do was try and blame me. She probably knew I would have thrown her right out the door if she had tried that shit. I told her that I wanted a divorce and her out of the house within a month. Also told her that she was moving to the spare room. I've been pretty much ignoring her ever since just scowling at her and shaking my head when she starts waffling nonsense. I don't want to hear it. She slept in the spare room last night and I haven't spoken to or texted with her at all today. If I'm lucky maybe she'll be gone when I get back from work but my luck is not that good I suppose. On getting her out though I was telling my parents what was happening and my mother was adamant I wasn't throwing her out onto the streets. She and my mother are close and always have been. We'd have been together 11 years in December. My mother was saying she made a mistake and that we should sort it out like adults that we've been through too much together, and that she didn't do anything it was just words. She completely took her side over mine. Couldn't believe it. Could this duck me here? Why do I have no right to ask her to leave if my mother is against it? It's gonna be my house when my parents pass and I did nothing wrong so I'm not leaving. It's probably gonna turn into a War of the Roses Part 2. I managed to get myself an appointment with a divorce lawyer for next week so I'll be going to that to discuss my options. Until then I'm just gonna ignore my soon-to-be ex-wife I guess. I know she's probably not gonna admit anything else now. I'll never know if she was a really good liar or she was just talking shit to him to get him on side with her for an affair. Monday the 16th of November. It's now been 20 days since I found out my wife was trying to cheat on me with my friend and the situation has become hellish. 
I gave her a month to get out and she's been sleeping in the spare room, but it's clear now she doesn't have any intention of going after she got in the ear of my mother. She doesn't have anywhere to go at any rate, but that's not my problem. I've seen my divorce lawyer multiple times, and I am now in the process of drawing up a divorce petition and having my wife serve divorce papers. I've also opened my bank account and taken 50% of the balance from our shared account. The atmosphere around the house has been weird, to say the least. The living room has turned into a no-man land where no one frequents as we both spend the majority of our time in our rooms. I've also intentionally been working late a lot so I don't have to interact with her much. I had been completely ignoring her but after reading about the 180, have started implementing that and been civil if a little cold towards her. I'm so glad I did this as I was beginning to feel like a monster refusing to acknowledge her existence. It was not the right way to behave and I ended up feeling like the one who had wronged her, rather than the other way about. The only time I broke from the 180 was when I walked into the bathroom last week and she was sitting on the floor by the bath crying. I helped her up and instinctively hugged her though it was more of a there there type hug than one with much love attached to it. The sad thing is that I'm so suspicious of her now that I wouldn't put it past her to be waiting on me coming in so she could perform. The thing is that probably isn't even true, but this is the sort of shit that's going through my head in this environment. It's just toxic. She's been crowing about how she'll do anything and everything to save this marriage, anything to prove to me that it was just a silly mistake, so I brought up a lie detector test. I don't plan on ever getting one done, wouldn't even know where to start, I just wanted to gauge her reaction. She was all for it, well until a few hours later when she came to me, tablet in hand, going on about how inaccurate they are. And that anxiety and nervousness can throw up false readings and with her and her anxiety disorder and all. I just laughed, wasn't even a normal chuckle either, it started as a bit of a cackle and ended in a childish giggle. It appears she would do everything to save this marriage well everything except take a lie detector test that is, hum. It doesn't even matter anyway, I meant what I said in my post, every morsel of love I had for her dissipated into the atmosphere after I read her say those horrible things. I don't see her as my true love anymore, the person I could tell anything to and would trust with my life. I just see trash, the trash that needs to be taken out before it stinks the place up. The jacket holder has been the talk of the town since I exposed him to our friend group a few weeks back. It's safe to say he has no friends left among us and has been completely ostracized. I tried phoning him a few times but he refused to answer and then blocked my number. Duck that little rat, I hope it was worth it. I've spoken to my mother multiple times about this and during a heated argument asked her why she was taking my wife's side like was there something she wasn't telling me here. What was she expecting? Us to live like roommates, go on as if nothing happened, it's ridiculous. She said she has always seen my wife as the daughter she never had but always wanted. My mother had a stillborn daughter before I was born and it has haunted her. So she latched onto my wife and has done since we got together. As I said previously, they have a close bond. The fact my wife doesn't have any family and only a few friends who have their own busy lives and families means if I threw her out she would be all alone and my mom thinks that's unacceptable. Especially during a pandemic. She tried to get me to come to a compromise saying that in three or four months we can look at it again and see where we are mentally and is pushing me to try couples counseling before I throw in the towel. I'm not doing that. The thought of being in the same house as my wife over Christmas makes me feel ill. She'll want to do it right as she does every year and it'll be a complete shit show. My dad, God love him, has never been much of a talker, never up nor down just always there. He's a quiet, proud but timid man and my mother's word has always been the one that matters in our house. People on here have been telling me that I'm selfish and spoiled cause it's not my house and I have no right to make demands but it's now a case of my wife or me for my parents. If worse comes to worse then I'm ready to walk out the door and never come back. Duck this house, I have to be able to look at myself in the mirror with some semblance of self-respect and someone has to keep their word in this debacle. If I do leave, my friend has said I can stay with him for a few weeks or so till I get myself sorted. If I do walk out that door though, I'm done with my parents, I'll never speak to them again in my life. They'll probably see it as me giving up on them me walking away without trying to at least have a go at fixing things first. I see it as them choosing someone who broke my heart over me. What will be the logistics of this once I'm gone?
just her staying there herself, my mother and father looking after a backstabber while their flesh and blood go off alone. A little more info on the house, my parents let us move in a year after our wedding. It was an apparent belated wedding gift, although that was just the chatter from them at the time. They were always planning on moving out and moving us in. I've spent tens of thousands on it over the years but that's neither here nor there. I have fantasies of leaving this all behind, going somewhere new, and starting again. But I don't have anywhere else to go. I've lived in this town my entire life. It's all I know. Am I being too harsh here? I'm ready to slingshot my parents right out of my life but I feel so torn. Why am I the one who has to lose everything and everyone? I've tried to be good, and I always thought you make your luck, and that good things happen to good people. Maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. Maybe I deserve all I duck and get. Now, here is the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed the part 1 of this story and there is one more part to come in the next video. Also let me know your opinion about this story in the comments section. And if you had a similar story or situation you can share it and I would love to read them. So before leaving please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with us for more awesome stories.